And let's praise one of my old, my old time favorites. Okay, how great is our God, the splendor of the King.
Let's close our eyes. Let's fold our hands. Uh, God, uh, we confess to you at this time that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Lord. Um, God, may we be able to truly enjoy uh, the time of worship, uh, truly be able to enjoy uh, the greatest the greatest gift that you've given to us of salvation through Jesus Christ, Lord. Allow us to be able to know what the covenant is. Allow us to be able to know uh, that, um, be able to see all things in advance through the covenant, Lord. Uh, because your covenant is the standard amongst these remnants, lives, Lord. Uh, God, may we be able to not see uh, things based on uh, the results. Help us to not be able to see things uh, based on our own, uh, our own thinking. Uh, but God, may we be able to see uh, the works of God. May we be able to see things taking place according to your word, Lord. Uh, to, this, uh, to these remnants, Lord, may they be uh, mature. May they be uh, truly individuals that can carry out uh, your greatest desire of evangelism and missions, Lord. Uh, God, uh, these are your remnants. So, God, may you be able to work through your mightily hand uh, and move their hearts and their minds so that as they worship today, that they'd be able to give you all in uh, during this time. We thank you so much. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's all stand up. You guys need to wake up a little bit. There's half that are awake and half that are asleep. Okay. All right. You guys can stretch. Hop on, stretch a little bit. Stretch. Okay. You guys ready? Okay. All right, we're going to sing RUTC answer, okay? We're going to sing this in the higher key today, okay? Are you guys ready? In the original key, so let's praise it together, okay? All right, there is something, there is something in me that's near my joy and my being. It's the feeling I'm lonely and weak. There is something in me that's near the answer from. with people that I meet. There's something in me that seals the blessing from me. It's the way I see people at my church. Oh, no. Every remnant CBD I be. There is someone in me who gives me joy and true peace. The one who is always with me. There is someone. From now, let me hear. And everything, everything's my common answer. Every work a part of my vision. In the place where you put me, that is my dream. After a practice, and the future will show God's masterpiece. All of this is every remnant CBD I feed. There is someone, there is someone in me who gives me joy and truth. He's the one who is always with me. There is. 
You guys need to start praising more with your vocals, all right? Okay, I know you guys do body worship, but you guys are smart enough to do it together. Are you smart enough to do it together, Lydia? You don't know? I think you're smart enough to do it together. All right, let's do it together. All right, summit time. All right, for those that don't do the body worship, I fully expect 100% of your, of your voices, okay? And for those that do both, okay? Let's pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit that you guys can do both. Okay? All right, summit time. God has called you and me to the endless covenant journey. He will save all the nations. That's our final destination for the world to be. of God, Jesus is the Christ, His power alone, so no matter what happens to you, do not let it shake or affect you, you just focus on God is with you and have some time, you have God's absolute confidence, you're all this journey. God has called you. Shake or affect you, you just focus on. 
Here we go. This is the day. All right, we're going to go left side and right side together, right? There we go. This is This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Left All right, one more time. This is the day. Left side. All, right, all together. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. strength to change your life, you're a remnant. Strength to change the field wherever you may go, you're a remnant. God's giving you strength to change the saints today. Emmanuel, God's with me for always. Day by day, life by your word. Day by day, when I pray you give me new strength day by day. I will take the gospel, live a life as the evangelist for you. God has given.
guys all may sit down and let's praise this last few together. God is God is Wonderful. Is he our youngest? I believe so. Our youngest remnant will come up and pray for us. Okay. All right, so I'll close our eyes. Let's close our eyes. Dear God, thanks you for this day. Please bless us and bless help us to Listen to to teachers and share message in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Remnant Hajin.
for praying for us. Okay? All right, at this time, I want you guys all to take out your Bibles, all to take out your prayer books. Amen. And Michael, how come? Can you fix that pew that you guys pushed out? Thank you. Let's straighten it out. Thank you. Okay, let's all pray together. The Apostles' Creed. Let's close our eyes. Let's fold our hands. Right, let's pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Success in worship. Three to one. May you open my heart to receive your word that I may devote myself to the pastor's teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. May you grant the five powers to the pastors. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Due to one, being obedient to the point of death for God's word and following the heart of Jesus Christ who died on the cross. May you allow the answers and blessings of 100% obedience of the word received from today's worship. I confess that Jesus Christ is my master. May you receive all the glory. Lord God, three, two, one. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Prayer for Vengeance Missions, 3 to 1. May you give me the word to boldly open my mouth and proclaim the rightful words. Mercy of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. Amen. Sit up straight, back off the back of the chairs. Both feet on the ground, arms to the side or on your lap. Now, when we're inhaling, it's with our nose. And when we're inhaling, pray, filling of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to say it. When you're inhaling, think filling of the Holy Spirit. When we're exhaling, think break down forces of darkness. Okay? I'm not going to say it, but when you exhale, break down forces of darkness. Okay. It, let, let's get all the bad air out. Inhale. Oh, even now the triune God is at work, always and forever. Even now God is working by spirit and word, Father. Even now the Christ is getting rid of the three curses, disasters, help, Satan, as a prophet, priest, king, and accomplishes salvation, son. And even now unseen to your eyes, the Holy Spirit is working upon us. Spirit, deeply enjoy this. Exhale. Were you guys praying, break down force of darkness? All right, inhale. Hold. What is arising right now? Our background is, is heaven. The time you spend in prayer is the time you bring God's kingdom here on earth. To bring God's kingdom means while we're praying, invisible to our eyes, God mobilizes angels for his errands. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. You have an amazing authority. You begin to break down the background of hell, bind Satan and all the force of darkness. Exhale. Okay. Think. Pray filling the Holy Spirit. Hold. Then five great strengths will be made for you. Spiritual power, intellectual or mental power, physical power, Financial or offering power, man or social power. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. There is something more important than all of these. Not only your heart, but your brain will be strengthened. Only then can you become summit, do well in your studies. Exhale.
and help. Hold. Heaven, this is our background. By the mystery of the triune God, enjoy God's kingdom here on earth, then we'll go to heaven. Just wait for God's kingdom, it will come. Everywhere you go, God's kingdom will come. As Joseph waited, God's kingdom came. He went as a slave to prison, able to wait. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Hell. We don't die and go to hell, but people are living a hellish life on earth, having the background of hell. Go to hell when they die. Satan continues to follow and torments their life, and at the end, drags people to hell. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Angels with the background of heaven, angels are ministering God's work. When they die, they usher us to heaven. Wherever you go, God, God mobilizes his angels. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Spiritual state. What's more important than answers is my spiritual state. This is where everything begins to be solved. Help me to have a healthy spiritual state that rides the flow of the covenant and is filled with the Holy Spirit always. Help me to listen to the voice of God and not the words of people. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Church. It's the shadow of the throne of heaven and the path to which we get there. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. People that remnants must meet and become leaders with the gospel, successful people with the gospel, fellow workers with the gospel. Exhale. Amen. And relax. Let's pray, Remnants, prayer for the church. Dear God, bless the pastors to be only in the gospel, evangelism, and prayer. Bless the church officers to save the remnants, church, field, regions, occupations. Bless the young adults to be prepared as the church officers, be the hands and feet of the pastors, and the platform for the remnants. Bless us to have the imprints, roots, nature of the word, prayer, evangelism, missions, academics. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. Amen. We pray for our pastor to be what? Only prayer, preaching, and teaching of the word. In other words, will be elders to stake the rest of their lives for saving the church, raising up the next future generations. We gotta, we gotta prepare ourselves to be elders ahead of time. Deaconesses senior deaconesses and our deaconesses, the mommies of the church. Yep, that's right, sacrifice themselves. And deacons, help everything run smoothly. Do we need a pat, pat, pat on the back, pat, pat, or the head, 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 or the back, 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 or the butt, 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 or the arm, 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 or the nose, 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 anywhere for a job well done? Whatever we're doing, we're doing it for God, right? And save the field because there's so many souls to be saved. Too many. Young adults, prepare to become and save the elites or successful people in this world. And uh, remnants, grew tuggies. Infants, roots, nature of the C, V, D, 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 I, and P, P. All right, what does C stand for? Covenant. covenant, which is all about God's sovereignty. God is in control, and we're going to actually talk about God's sovereignty today, right? See it ahead of time. V stands for what? Vision. God's vision, which is all about God's plan, world evangelization. You know what I'm saying? Licked it, it's mine now. Make this vision mine. It's not, it's not his, it's mine. D stands for what? Dream. Not Dunkin' Donuts, dream. 
What is our dream? It's all about God's promise. In other words, covenant. Enjoy it ahead of time. There's going to be ups and downs in our, in our life, on our journey, on our covenant journey. There definitely is going to be. If you don't have the dream or God's covenant, when those downs, when those ups and downs come, you're going to be moved by it. I stands for what? Image. That's right. You draw a picture. On our life journey, we only hold on to two things, word and prayer. Whoopee. Congratulations. Conquer ahead of time. God's word already told us what's going to happen. So hold on to it. P stands for what? Practice. P, 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 P stands for practice. What do we need to put into practice? For God's goal. Our masterpiece for God's goal. It's finished. God already finished everything. Our life is already set. We just got to go for God's goal. I don't know. Today's message, King Ahasuerus. I don't know how to pronounce his name. So I'll just call him King Aha. Aha. I'll just call him King Aha. Oh, it's supposed to say Aha. It's not working. King Ahasuerus. It almost sounds Spanish. Ahasuerus. It's too long. I'm just going to call him King Aha, okay? So during today's message, I'm just going to call him King Aha. Now what do we need to learn from King Aha's story? God's sovereignty. God's in control. He's a non-believer. He's a king of an idol nation of Persia. Lots of idols. But even that was in God's control. Know what I'm saying? Aha. All done? This is a lot to write down. King Ahasuerus. Aha. Ahasuerus. 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 Ahasuerus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. King Ahasuerus Rex. God's sovereignty. All done? Can I move on? Today's Bible verse comes from Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. It's on the screen. I will read it for us. Actually, we're going to read Daniel chapter 2, 21 together. And then I'll read the second one. I will read the second one. But everybody turn to Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Capitulo 2, verse 21. Capitulo 2, 21. Daniel, capitulo 2, 21. Daniel, yeah, where is Daniel? Is he at home? Yeah, he must not be feeling well. No worries. Is everybody there? Yes. Thumbs up if you're ready. All right, I got three thumbs up, four thumbs up, five, six, seven. Let's go, Michelangelo. That's not a thumbs up. Th those are all five fingers. It's all right. If you didn't find it, I'll read it. Okay, two, 21. Let's read it one voice. Three, two, one. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He f gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Amen. So God is the one in charge of bringing up kings and also bringing down kings. Mm, interesting. All right, 9 verse 1, it says, In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom. All right, so we're going to learn about another, uh, Ahas, King Ahaz's other name is Xerxes. Does that sound familiar? Where did, where did we hear Xerxes from? From Esther's story. Ah, interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Lesson objective. Jesus' life, Jesus' power to experience the working of God, the Holy Spirit. It's all about God's sovereignty. JLJP to experience WOHS, God's sovereignty. Sovereignty, just write what's in the green. God's sovereignty means he's in control over everything. You know what I'm saying? No? Fine. Nice shirt, Sky. I heard, I heard some remnants went trick-or-treating yesterday. So instead of candy and chocolate, Michelangelo got beef chunkies. Interesting. That's a crime. Can I move on? Unbelievable. You guys saved us some candy, right? Reese's peanut butter cups. Anybody anybody have Reese's peanut butter cups? Those are my favorites. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Fourth. Three. Fifth. Fourth. Okay. First point. We need to know Israel's history or background. It's an ongoing cycle. Cycle means it goes around and around and around and around and around and around and around. You shall be hypnotized. Ah, she blinked. Israel's cycle, it goes around and around and around. Well, let's see how it started. God created Adam and Eve. Eventually, God had to choose one nation for the Christ to come because Adam and Eve made a boo-boo. They made a mistake. They separated from God. So everybody's born separated from God, which means Christ had to come to solve that problem. And who did God choose? A guy named Abraham. Abraham. Now, Abraham's family... Uh, was in charge of making idols. What? God's like, uh-uh, you get out of there. You leave your papa's household and go to the land I'm going to show you. The land of C-A-N-A-A-N. Gana'an. Canaan. Yes, the promised land, which is where Christ the Messiah is going to be born. Know what I'm saying? Okay. So God chose Abraham, and he said, I will bless you, your family, your nation. All the earth will be blessed through you, your offspring or your children will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. That's a lot of children, huh? Thing is, he was really old, so he couldn't have any children. His body didn't work anymore. He's, a, he's his grandpa. And his wife, Sarah, she's grandma. Body's not working anymore. So they had unbelief. Uh-uh, we're not going to have any children. So... Abraham, but Abraham still held on to the covenant. And whatever God says comes true, right? And through Abraham, they had a son. And who was that son? Not Isaiah. David. Not David. Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Uh, yeah, Isaac was the hairy one. And Jacob was the one as smooth as a dolphin. All right. So anyways, God chose the Israelites, but... Uh, they, they lost hold of God's promise. What was his promise? Christ. Who said that? Oh, good job, Sajini. You said it? Oh. I, I see you, Chloe. I see you. Yeah, the promise was Christ. All nations will be blessed through Christ. Nothing else. Through Christ. But they lost hold of it. Then they worship idols and they threw the covenant away. Azebenya. Ah, yeah. They lost hold of the promise. Now, the monkey should have held on. The Israelites should have held on to God's promise, but they threw it away. Ah, yeah. That's not how the movie goes. Yeah, so what happened when they lost hold of the promise and threw the promise of Christ away? Ah, of course they're going to be punished because God got super angry. 
I said not to worship idols and hold on to Christ, but they still did idol worship. They threw the covenant away, and they became slaves, right? Now, whenever the Israelites' entire nation faces huge problems, there's always a few remnants who saved the entire nation. Right? So there were slaves, and then just Grutuggies. Joseph Moses. Joseph and Moses were the Grutuggies, or the remnants, who restored the covenant. So you know how they threw Simba? Joseph and Moses went and got Simba back. Right? Covenant of Christ. Okay? So, God blessed them and forgave them. Right? Whenever a remnant, the remnants restore Christ, whenever Israelites restored Christ, that's when they, God forgave them. And then what did God do? God brought them out of Egypt. Right? They, God took them out of slavery. And God forgave them. Who could turn back God's anger? If God's angry, who can make him feel better? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Only, only, only God himself could make himself feel better. Right? How about, how about us? Let's say, let's say that, that guy right there is angry. Uh, Addie's not playing with me. Uh, Addie said bad words to me. Uh. I'm getting bullied at church. That guy. And then how do, we make, how do we make that guy feel better? All right, I'm sorry. You could play with us. Here, have some candy. And is he going to feel better? Yeah. He's getting more mature. Okay, if I give you $100, are you going to feel better? <laughs> how about How about Captain America toy? Oh, it's not working. How about Spider-Man toy? Oh, he's going to twist his head. How about a new How about all the snacks and toys you want? Oh, summit attitude. But it usually works, right, with kids. But not for God. When we hold on to Christ, that's when God's like, all right, since you're holding on to my promise, I'll forgive you. But here's the thing. They lost, they threw the covenant away again. Ah, yeah. And then the Israelites, they kept focusing and were centered on uh, worldly things, physical things, right? Like having fun, money. Having a good old time, being comfortable, having a nice home, big family, woo, fun time. That's what they cared about, and they threw God's covenant and worship away. And then what happened? Do you think God got angry again? They only care about worldly things and whatever they wanted to do. Are we kind of like that? Yeah. Sometimes we forget about Christ, worship, get out of here. I don't need that. I'm going to have fun. And then they were captives in Babylon. Of course God's going to be angry. Like that guy who threw the ball away, threw the covenant away. Whenever we do that, of course God's going to get angry. And they were captives in Babylon. But a few Grutuggies stood up and held on to the covenant. And who were they? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, Esther. That's right. Not Easter, Esther. And yes, the Grutuggies. I am Grutuggies. It should be we are Grutuggies. What's the question? Eh. Sounds similar, though. All right, Grutuggies. Daniel, three friends, Esther. Yeah, and they restored it. The covenant of Christ. And do you think God forgave the Israelites just because of these few Grutuggies? Yeah. Yeah. God forgave them. Right? Because they held on to Christ. Okay? Forgiven through Christ. What did we learn last week? Remember our king, uh, what's his name? Cyrus? King Cyrus. God moved King Cyrus' heart to do what? To send everybody back home and rebuild the temple. 
What is, what is the temple supposed to be? It's all about Christ, right? And worship. And God forgave them. But guess what happened? They threw it away again. Uh-oh. They didn't care about worshiping Christ anymore. They only cared about money, money, money. Who cares? It's just money. They started caring more about money. Mm. Yeah. And physical things, their happiness, their success, their family. Are, are, are we like that sometimes? I hope not. Are our parents like that sometimes? Yeah, I guess, maybe. At home, do you hear your parents always complaining about money? Money, 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 money. I do. Yeah, I do too sometimes. But is that right? No, it's not about money, money, money. Restore worship. Everything else follows. God even takes care of the little squirrels and the birds and the pigeons and the rats and the skunks. I see skunks out here sometimes at night when I do the perimeter check. There's skunks. One time I saw like a, like a hawk eating. Yeah, the hawk was in the middle of the, the baseball field. You know the big field in between our church and Japanese school? I, sh I sh shine my flashlight and there was like glowing eyes. And I'm like, oh, it's not moving. It must be a skunk. And all of a sudden, it starts flying. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know a skunk could fly. And it went all the way into the trees. Maybe it was hunting mice. Anyways, what's up? Yeah, yeah. There's like two skunks around here. I think they hide in the bushes and come out at night. Anyways, they only cared about money. And what do you think happened? If you lose hold of Christ and only care about physical things, of course God's going to try to teach a lesson. Yep, and then they were colonized in Rome. Now, who do you think restored everything? Grutuggies, right? Grutuggy remnants. Early church members, Paul, Peter, Stephen, the disciples. You got that right. You like to use this handwriting? Oh, gee, thanks. You get an F. No, no cupcake for you. All right. And whenever these Grutuggies or these remnants restored Christ, God forgave. You see how it just goes over and over and over again? Yeah. Yeah. So what should we do? Should we do the same thing go over and over and over again? No. Hold on to Christ ahead of time. See, it's like a hamster wheel. It goes over and over and over and over again. Right? God saves them. Yay, there's peace. Uh-oh, they sin. Oh, they face problems. They repent. Oh, forgive me. Oh, God saves them and forgives them. Oh, there's peace. Oh, sin. Oppression. Repentance. Deliverance. Peace. Sin. Over and over and over and over and over again. We gotta stop it, right? Remember Friday worship? How it was stacking up and we had to karate chop that? Stop it. It's a fat hamster. Yeah, he needs to exercise. All right, so in order for us to stop going through this cycle over and over and over again, we need to start holding on to Christ. Now. Restore worship. Now. If not, you're going to go through that cycle, I'm telling you. It's just a matter of time. All right. So hold on to Christ, the offspring of the woman who crushed Satan's head. Uh, the ark, which is the boat. Whoever goes inside the ark will live. Christ. Oh, the blood sacrifice, the, off, the sacrificing the lamb. And how did God's people escape Egypt? When they put the blood of the Lamb, which represents Christ. The virgin birth, God will be, his name will be called Emmanuel. Jesus means Emmanuel, which means God with us. And hold on to Jesus, who is the Christ. True PPK. Okay? And Christ, this gospel, needs to become our, what does IRN stand for? Imprint root nature, or in Korean, 
Knock root tuggy. Gakpuche. Gakpuche. That's our gakpuche. Not our chicken feet. You gotta change that chicken feet imprints. Remember that? All right. All right, next point. So who was King Ahasuerus or King Aha? Who was King Aha? Well, another, his other name is Xerxes, remember? Xerxes. Did you write this down? King Aha. This is King Aha. He kind of looks familiar, huh? Xerxes, that's his other name. Okay. King Ahasuerus. King Ahasuerus Rex. King Xerxes. Same king. All right, so who was King Xerxes or King Aha? He was a king and he was a Mede. I guess that, that was where he was from. And he was a king of the Persian Empire. Now the Persian Empire is the one that took over Babylon, right? King Nebuchadnezzar, King Belshazzar, uh, where Daniel and his three friends were captives. Uh, king Ahasuerus, or King Xerxes, took over, okay? And remember King Darius? Darius, who listened to the, the troublemakers and then put Daniel in the lion's den? Him. That king, okay, King Xerxes was his papa. Yeah, King Xerxes was King Darius's papa. Daddy. That's my boy. Okay. Uh, king Xerxes, King Aha was the dad. No, no, no. King Aha was Darius's papa. Okay? So you kind of have a better idea of who he is, right? Yeah. So this was his kingdom. That's how big it was. Yeah, the red part. All the way from, what does that say? Bacteria? Bacteria? Oh, okay. So basically, he was a king of the Persian Empire. Got the beat. Persian Empire, great kingdom, big, huge kingdom. Uh, and here's the thing, why was he such a powerful king? Because who makes, like who's, who appoints or sets up leaders in the world? Even God does it, even though, even if they're non-believers and they're kings of idol nations, it's God who allowed it. He says, God changes times and seasons. He removes kings. Remember King Belshazzar, the one with the writing on the wall? He was killed at night. He sets up new kings, King Aha, and he gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to those who have understanding, like God gave Daniel and his three friends wisdom. So God's in control. Oh, hi. God's the one in control. That means God's sovereignty. Sovereign means he's in control. So what is this, uh, this Tuesday? We, I, don't, I don't have school on Tuesday either. Yeah, election day. So election day, whoever becomes president in, America, in the United States, who allowed it? Yeah. So whether you want this person or that person, or this lady or that lady, who, in the end, who's the one who makes them a leader? It's God, right? Interesting. No, there was a little, there's a feather. All right, King Aha, he expanded, which means he spread his idol nation. Uh-oh. Yep. King Aha expanded his idol nation. Uh-oh. God said not to worship idols. God said don't put anything in front of God. Let's see what happens. King Aha expanded his idol nation. Now, he was 
the king over 127 provinces. 127, what, huge cities? That's pretty, pretty impressive, huh? No, that's, a, that's a lot. It's expanded all the way from modern-day India all the way to Ethiopia, that entire area. Yeah, remember we saw, I showed you the, or this picture in red? It's from India all the way to Ethiopia. That entire nation was the Persian Empire under King Aha. Impressive. Yeah, he is. Remember we learned about him during VBS? Yeah, <laughs> he's funny. He's not King Xerxes. He's the he's an actor. He's a Christian actor. Remember he got the award for like the generation award or something? And then he talked about you have to believe in God and pray. Yeah. Yeah, and he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. Anyways, King Aha, this was uh they say this is what his, one of his probably one of his palaces looked like. Looked like in city of Susa. Susa. So this was his palace, great, huge palace in Susa. And people think this is what it looked like. That's a, that's a huge palace, look at that. It's like bigger than the White House. It kind of looks like a museum. Look at that. People say it also looked like that on the outside. Wow, that's like a football stadium. Yeah, it kind of does look like in Rome. And this was even before Rome. Look how beautiful that is. He had a garden in front. Maybe that's where he had the banquet, the party maybe. There's another one. Yeah, look at that. Huge palace in Susa. I don't know. His workers, his soldiers. Yeah. Impressive. So... Uh, when, you're, when you're a king or a leader or a president, who do you have under you giving you advice? advice. You have like advisors. You have a team, right? Okay, so you have your team. So part of his, his teammates or people under him giving him advice was a guy named Haman. Not Hayman. <laughs> Not Hayman. Haman. The guy with the big nose right there in the middle. So King Xerxes or King Aha, he had advisors. One of them was Haman. Okay, so you guys know where this story is going, right? All right. So anyways, uh, remember when King Cyrus had all the Israelites leave Babylon and go back home? Well, some of them didn't go back home. Yeah, some of them didn't go back home. Some of them went to other places, and some of them went to Susa. Now, part of those people, like some people who went to Susa, can you guess who was in that group? Yeah, it was Mordecai Esther. Oh, you get what I'm go get? What I'm getting at here? Okay, so Esther and Mordecai, they ended up in Susa. And once they were in Susa, or that, that area, that's when King Aha, or King Xerxes, took over. So now they're under, uh, they're under captivity again. Uh, yeah. It's like a cycle over and over and over again. So there is Mordecai and Esther. Uh, so I guess Esther's parents, they split up when King Cyrus said, go back. Go back, leave Babylon. And then somehow they just got split up. So that's why Esther was with Mordecai. But Esther was one of those grew tuggies. Next point. King Aha, he realized or understood the covenant through Remnant Esther. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just a teeny beeny, teeny tiny remnant. Just a little girl.
King Ahab realized the covenant through remnant Esther. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So we know the story of King. I'm not going to go into super specifics, but King Aha, he threw a banquet, party time, for his, what, his people under him and the other kings that came to visit. And he showed off all of his wealth, his entire kingdom. And this went on for days and days and days. It's a big palace. And they, he threw a big party there. I'm sure there were disco lights, lasers. Popeye's chicken. So they had a party. Okay, now King Vashti, which was King Ahaz's wife. King Ahaz's wife was King Vashti. Now King Queen, not King, Queen Vashti also had a party for her, for the ladies. Yay, girls night out. But you know what? Queen Vashti had a spiritual problem. And do you know what Queen Vashti's spiritual problem was? She had a huge spiritual problem. She couldn't control herself. Well, when you're a queen, you have nothing else to do, and you have power, and you have so much time, what do women usually do? <laughs> Make up, okay. Well, Queen Vashti's problem was drinking. Do your, parent, do, your, do your moms drink wine at home? Yeah, sometimes. sometimes, yeah. I mean, yeah, moms do that to relax. But she got carried away. She got really carried away. Yeah. So once you have, once she starts drinking wine and she's with her, the other ladies, now she's getting more defiant, more aggressive. And then King Aha said, all right, I want to I show off my beautiful wife in front of all the other people. And then he sent like some soldiers, Queen Vashti, the king is calling you. Now Queen Vashti said, no, I don't want to. Ugh. Why? Because she has a spiritual problem, right? When she starts drinking wine, she gets all defiant and aggressive and stubborn. Uh-uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Queen Vashti. Vashti, Vashti. Now, she, I'm, the king was embarrassed in front of his uh, nobles. He was angry. So some of his advisors said, Mm, let's get rid of the queen. Why don't you have a new beauty pageant, a contest uh, throughout the entire kingdom and gather, gather all the pretty ladies and we will train them in the palace for, what was it, 30 days? Something like that? No, it wasn't 30 days. It was like three years. So they had a, like a contest. And guess who was chosen? All right. So they had it. So... That's not Esther. But then Haman suggested they have a beauty contest. Is that a leopard? I guess he had a leopard. Interesting. Now, Esther was chosen. But King, I mean, Mordecai said, Esther, sweetheart, don't tell that you are Jewish. Don't. I guess the Holy Spirit was guiding him to say that. He said, don't. Keep it a secret. There's, there is gonna, there's going to be God's time, but keep it a secret. Okay. And Esther became queen. Right? I'm sure God had a plan. God was preparing Esther. I wonder how pretty she was. Hmm. When, I go to, when I go to heaven, I'm going to look for Esther and get her autograph. And get a selfie. I'm going to take a selfie with Esther. All right, so now you know the story of Haman, right? Haman was powerful. He, get, he was one of uh, King Ahaz's advisors who gave him advice. And then Haman became powerful, and then he's walking around the kingdom expecting people to bow down to him because he likes attention. Are you guys like that too? Are you guys going to be the kind of grown-ups who likes when people bow down and attention? Well, he was one of them. And then Mordecai, he's like, I ain't bowing down to you. You're probably younger than me. I'm not bowing down to you. And Haman was angry. He was boiling inside. Like, you know the, the movie Inside Out and the red guy? That's probably him inside. So he, now he thought of a plan. 
Oh, okay, I'm going to go to the king and say there's a group of troublemakers in this kingdom, the Israelites. So we have to annihilate them, kill them all. So he went to the king, and then the king listened to him because that's one of his advisors. I trust you, so I'll listen to you. All right, let's pass the rule. Let's pass the law. Ah, evil guy, bad boy. He needs m e m e Okay. Now, Mordecai, uh, he kept sending letters or messengers, and they kept communicating back and forth because Queen Esther was in the palace. Remember the fancy palace that I showed you? Yeah, she was stuck there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then she remembered what Mordecai told her. But then now is the time because the God's, God's people is in danger. So Mordecai, now he tells Esther, okay, I think now is the time. You have to go to the king. God made you queen. To save us for for this time, exact for this exact moment. Now, was the queen scared and and nervous? Yeah. But then Mordecai said, "If you don't do this, then you will be cursed. You and your family. Just wait and see." And the Esther's like, "Oh, yikes! Okay, okay. Why don't you guys gather all the Israelites, all the Jewish people, fast, which means don't eat anything, and pray for me. And if I die, I die." What was another way she said that? If I, per- if I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. All right, so be it. Is that summit attitude? Woohoo! Are you girls going to have that kind of summit attitude? And that boy? If I perish, I perish. Now you're able to make such a bold confession like that. God has to allow it, right? Fast on my behalf. I will go. If I perish, I perish. Because you can't just go barge into the king's uh, hall or throne and say, "Hey, what's up? Let me let me talk to you." You can't do that to the king. You need to, the king has to call you, or he has to lift up his scepter. If he doesn't lift up the scepter, you die. Uh oh. All right, so the queen went and after was it three days of fasting and praying, she went before the king. Remember, step by step, slowly. Remember that homework assignment. Jesus, not Jesus. Huh. She was probably praying like crazy, and the king's like, "Oh, <gasps> Esther, my darling, how can I help you?" And then what did Esther say? I invite you to my dinner party. Bring Haman. Okay, the king's like, okay, something's up here. Something's fishy. And then the king asks, "I will give you everything. Uh, what can I do for you?" And the master said, "Hmm, come to another dinner party, and pr- please bring Haman." And the king's like really suspicious, suspicious, really fishy. Wow, look how patient Esther was. Should we be patient too? Yeah, we should. We should be able to wait for God's time, definitely. And then we know what happened. It's that guy. It's Haman. Haman is killing the Jews. And guess what? I'm Jewish. Haman. And then the king went outside to do some deep breathing in his wonderful garden. Remember, you saw the picture of the garden and the palace. And what was what did Haman do? Remember, he fell on top of Esther. His shoelace got untied, and he fell on top of As- Esther. And the king's like, "Hey, man, what are you doing?" And he was killed. Yikes! And then what? Yeah, there she is again. Oh, poor Haman. And then what did Queen Esther uh, ask the king to do after he died? He's gone. Esther said, "Okay, allow us to fight back, and also have a feast called Purim, which is still kept to this day, where they think about and worship God and how uh, through Esther they were saved in Persia. Right? They still keep it to this day. Yeah. And did the king listen to Esther?" Yeah, and did the king ha- get to know Esther's God? Yeah, look at that. He listened.
and they wrote it down. They wrote it down in the scroll, that, which means it's an official law now. You know what I'm saying? All right, I think this is the last point. Yeah, this is the last point. All right, God's sovereignty. Sovereignty means God's in control, right? The leaders that, uh, the leaders of the church, of the world, of schools, of our homes, whoever the leader is, God appointed that leader. Interesting. The president, the king, the queen, vice president. Yeah, God allowed it. Everything's in God's control. So what do we need to do? We just got to follow, follow God's word. No, they're following God's word. Even though they don't have fingers or toes, they're still following God's word. And that's what we got to do. If, if we know God's sovereignty or that God's in control, what do we need to do? There's nothing else to do except for follow God's word because God's in control, right? But do we follow our own plan sometimes? Should we? We got to be like those weirdos with no toes and feet and no fingers and just follow God's word. Do they have no faith? Oh, yeah. Eh. Now, if you don't follow God's word, that's evil, right? It doesn't matter how nice of a person you are. Rich, poor, good, bad, doesn't matter. If you're not following God's word, that's evil. Yeah. God's word says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your strength. Now, if we don't do that or succeed in worship, is that evil? Definitely. Whenever we don't follow God's word, that's evil. So follow God's word, okay? If not, that's evil. That's evil. <laughs> All right. So if we know that God's in complete control or God's sovereignty, we know that God has his perfect timing, right? God has his plan, his will. So all we need to do is wait. Just like dogs wait for their owners. What do you, what, if you guys have a pet, what, wait, wait, and then the dogs wait. All right, and then there's some crazy dogs who don't even listen to the owners, right? But you got to train your dogs to wait, and then they should be able to wait, right? Just like that, we got to wait for God's timing, for God to work. We got to wait for God. Just like Esther was very patient, and she waited and kept her mouth shut. It's a really fat dog. Is that from a movie? I think that's from the movie, Secret Life, Secret Life of Pets. Okay, so once God's timing comes, that's when you challenge. Go challenge. Just like Esther challenged, once God's timing came, okay, now's my chance. She opened the doors and went to the king. She challenged. Oh. Yeah, so you just wait for God's, God's time. When God's door opens, go challenge, okay? Also, if we know that God's in complete control, we need to serve our leaders, right? Who's the leaders in the church? Pastors, elders, deacons, deaconesses, uh, teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to know that even though I don't like that leader, whether it might be like whoever's going to be president on Tuesday or uh, whoever our boss is once we get older and get jobs, whoever our teachers are at school, the, f the fact is they're leaders because God allowed it, right? Right? So if we serve our leaders, then we have, we're actually serving who? Yeah. So when you guys get older, some of you guys probably already feel like this, maybe. Oh, I don't like that person. I don't want to listen to him or her. Yeah, we might feel that way sometimes. It might be towards me or Teacher Christina. Yeah, you never know. You, might, you guys might be good at hiding it. But... If you're able to serve your leaders, teachers, parents, presidents, kings, queens, 
then that's actually serving who? It's actually serving God, right? Now, if you don't like this leader, I'm not going to listen to him. Ugh. Then that's not really serving God, right? We have to know our leaders and serve them as, we're, as if we're serving God. Okay? Now, is that summit attitude? Definitely. That's how you build your summit attitude. Okay? It's all training. Okay? Everything, that, everything in church, it's all part of training too. God's preparing you. Know what I'm saying? Just like these minions. I love minions. Because they serve their leader no matter what. Even though they look like jelly beans. Yeah. And God is preparing you, right? So serve your leaders, your teachers at school. Serve your teachers. Don't be a rebellious student who doesn't listen to their teachers or parents. Do it as if we're serving God because God's the one preparing you. God prepared Esther ever since she was young. And just like that, God's preparing us. And God will provide for us everything. Remember when Abraham took his hairy son up to the mountain to sacrifice his, his son Isaac? And then what happened? What was in the bushes? Right when he was about to stab the son, ah, there was a ram. Yeah, a ram, a lamb, goat. Yeah. And what happened to the ram? It died instead of Isaac. So ever since Isaac's little, what did Isaac learn? Oh, Christ dies for us. He learned about the gospel ever since he was little. And what you call that is... Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. God will prepare everything for you. Jehovah Jireh. Believe that. There's Abraham and Isaac. And don't just look at the results. Don't look at the outer appearance. Okay? So... When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, do you think people thought, oh, Daniel, he was thrown into the lion's den because uh, God was punishing him? Was that true? No. How about, oh, when Daniel was working for the king, ooh, God blessed him because uh, God loved Daniel. Is that true too? Okay. How about, remember Job? Job lost Everything, his family died, uh, his home was destroyed, all his animals killed, um, and he had a skin disease. What did all his worldly friends tell him? Oh, God's punishing you. But was that true? No. And how about when Job received double of everything? Doubled the health, doubled the family members, doubled his house size, doubled the animals? What do you think the worldly friend said? God bless, God is blessing you because he likes you. Or you did something well for God. Is that true too? Uh, so don't just look at the results. People just look at the results. Um, when someone give, let's say you give one million dollars for offering. What do you think some people will do? Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Is that true? And what if, what if like, Paulito, he gives a nickel. God, this is all I have. Here's a nickel. <laughs> what do you think people will say about Paul? Ugh. Ooh. Ooh, Eddie gave a million dollars. Oh, Eddie, million dollars. Paulito, oh, nickel? Ugh. But that's just the results, right? That's just outside. What does God really look at? The inside, right? Don't just look at the results. People just look at the results. That's not what God looks at, right? Anyways, from King Aha, King Aha's story, we should, we should learn about God's sovereignty. What does sovereignty mean? 
God's in control. Okay? All right. So during forum time, we'll talk about it. All right. Culture time. Culture time. In America, American culture and the Korean culture is totally different, right? Like in American culture, what do, like even the kids, how do they call their parents? Sometimes they call them by their first names. Did you know that? Yeah. Or uh, if someone's older than you, like in America, and you're younger, even if you're younger, you could still call them by their first name. What? Yeah. Now, how about in Korean culture? You can't, you can't call them by their first name. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very disrespectful, right? Or even when you have like a boss in American culture, American culture, it's like you're the same, right? But then in the Korean culture, you respect the leader. And this is not just in Korean, but like basically most of the world, American culture is kind of weird. Yeah. So uh, what should we do? God told us to serve our leaders, right, or our teachers. Instead of calling, how do we call our teachers? Oh, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, right? We call them Mr. or Mrs. first. But then Amer some American, American culture, they might call them by the first name. Yeah, so uh, we should get in a habit of adding Mr. or Mrs. Or when you... I like, I like this African-American culture. They say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, even to their parents. What? Yeah, 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 yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Is that like, a, like serving your leaders? Yeah, yeah, I like that culture. Hmm. But anyways, and by the way, Tuesday is election day, right? Whoever becomes president, doesn't matter because who's in control, actually? God. Yeah, so whatever happens, it's still God in control. Uh, okay, prayer for 237 nations. Today we're going to pray for Austria, which is mostly Christian, and then Czech Republic, which is mostly Catholic. We, we know the difference by now, right? Yeah? No? Te well, teachers will explain. Who's laying down? Three, two, one. Dear God, may you bless Austria and Czech Republic so that the gospel may enter and revive these nations. May disciples arise and shine the light of the gospel here. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. All right. All right. Jesus' life, Jesus' power. We're going to talk about have hang, not hangouts, but forum in our classrooms. Let's keep up doing your, your Summit TAV prayer books during your Summit TAV time at home, on your own, or together. Homework. Who did finish? Not even close. All right. This will be due. Flipbook will be due. Should I give you, I'll give you another week. But I'm adding another homework assignment on top of that. What? You guys ready? This is, your, this is your homework for next week or this week, including the flip book. All right. Whenever your leader tells you to do something, we say, we give a salute. And say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Now, one troublemaker remnant, uh, I think it was yesterday, Teacher Jinster was like, stop running in the hallway. And she looked at me and just continued to run down the hallway. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God. God bless her soul. I'm not going to say who it is, but I'm not going to say who it is. But, okay, whenever your leader, parent, teacher, uh, pastor, tells you to do something this week, if the, if the leader is not Korean, if, if the leader is not Korean, you give a salute, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. 
but inside your heart, you're thinking what? Yes, Lord, right? Okay, yes, Lord. Because we're actually doing it for God, right? Now, if your leader, who is Korean, then instead of doing this, because we don't do that in Korean culture, right? Like, oh, uh. How do we say hi to like, our elders in, in Korean culture? We bow instead. So instead of doing this, we'll, we'll bow and say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. But inside, what are you thinking? Yes, Lord. Okay? So whenever a leader tells you to do something in church, home, or school, what are you doing? Or, but inside, what are you thinking? Yes, Lord. Who is confused with this homework assignment? Are you confused? Right. Teacher Christina will explain it. What's up, Michael? Oh, you do this then. Yeah, you don't do this. You do this. Okay? All right. All right. Let's take out our offering. Paulito. And then Bible, Bible writing for my class will be Esther chapter 4. Yes. It's fine. Just, just put it in for today. But starting next week, make sure you have an envelope. Or you could, or you could get an envelope and give it to Teacher Christina later. Oh, Michael's doing it? Okay. And then next week, after such, Addy? I think Addy's praying next week. Addy's praying next week. Lydia, get an envelope. Don't put it in yet. Get an envelope and just give it to Teacher Christina later. The offering. All right. Uh, let's pray the... Okay, I'll pray for us. We'll do Lord's Prayer, and then we'll split. All right. Uh, dear Lord, may you bless our precious remnants. Uh, just like Esther was able to wait, holding on to your covenant for your time schedule, help us to do the same thing, and help us to know that you're in absolute control, and help us to know your sovereignty more and more and more. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for this day, our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.